Aaron Kroger, he's got a problem with consistency. He writes, hey Rob, um, I think the biggest roadblock in my playing is consistency. Sometimes I play really well with decent speed and groove. Sometimes I can't seem to play anything. I'm uncoordinated and sluggish. Been there. So in practice, I'm either holding ground or catching up to where I was. So he's basically just plateaued. My question then is how do I raise my floor so my bad playing days are still dependable and closer to my good playing days? It's a good question. Everybody goes through it. Every serious musician plateaus at some point. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I think roadblocks and plateaus are an important part of the learning process. I got two valuable pieces of advice for you that I am 100% sure will help you out. Number one, the first thing that you need to do, as soon as you hit a plateau like you just did, get into something else. The moment you hit a roadblock and you feel like you're just not getting anywhere, you're not getting any further in your playing, it means that chapter's done. You need to move on to something else. My first three years of playing, um, the majority of the time was spent playing along to my favorite album. So it was a lot of The Police and Level 42 and Big Country and Living Color and all kinds of these bands that I was really into. And I would just go down there for hours at a time and play along to these albums. Then, one day my brother comes home with a Chick Corea album, changed everything. That's the day I discovered Dave Weckl, and I was like, I don't know anything at this point. I thought I was good, I probably suck. So it was time to, to dig into this, and I think for the next, geez, five to 10 years, man, was spent just digging in hard to jazz fusion. I started getting into Weckl, Dennis Chambers, Vinny, um, Will Kennedy, Peter Erskine, all kinds of different uh, drummers that really started to challenge my own playing. Because I was basically just being exposed to stuff I didn't even know was possible on the kit. So, it's the first thing you need to do, man. Just get into something else. Like whatever you're listening to now, just put it to the side and explore another area of playing and just study that music, get into that music. Um, if you really wanna get into some stuff that you're, you're gonna learn from and some drummers that you're really gonna learn some stuff from, my advice to you, and no disrespect to all these new dudes, stay away from the young guys, all right? You gotta be willing to dig back and listen to all the older dudes. You might be a fan of Tony Royster, but Tony got all his stuff from Dennis Chambers. Dennis Chambers got all his stuff from Billy Cobham, right? So you have to dig back. Go back and, and check out a lot of these um, now veteran drummers because this is where all the new guys are getting their stuff from. These guys these days, man, they're phenomenal drummers but you gotta be willing to go back and learn from the old dudes. My advice to you, I don't know how old you are, how long you've been playing, but I'll tell you something. If you go back to around mid to late 80s, between the mid to late 80s and like mid 90s, the jazz fusion era that was happening around that time, holy smokes, man. Like after my brother brought home that Chick Corea album, we started getting into Chick, Yellow Jackets, Mike Stern, John Schofield, Uzeb from up here in Canada, Steve Coleman and Five Elements was a huge thing for me. I learned a ton of stuff from that. It's hard to plateau when you're listening to challenging music because the stuff is just so hard. The only way you're gonna plateau is if you quit. So learning all of that harder stuff will kind of trickle down 
to the stuff that you already know how to do and it's just going to get better. The easier stuff that you've already been kind of doing, just the residual benefits alone of tackling the harder stuff will make the easier stuff even easier. So that's the first bit of advice, get into some new stuff. Second bit of advice, which is going to sound a little bit weird, but breaks. Take breaks. And I'm not talking about a day or two, I'm talking about weeks. In a previous house, I decided I was going to finish my basement. It was an empty basement in the house that we were staying in, and I was going to finish it, three quarters of it anyway. Put a recording studio down there and a nice little sitting room because I was going to start teaching. It took me about four or five months. So that was four or five months of not being able to play the drums at all. I don't even really think I touched a, a practice pad that often, to be honest. But the thing that really shocked me was how much better I was four or five months later when I sat down on a kit for the first time. It was crazy. My wife recently found an article on how the brain works. And basically, your brain keeps processing and learning information long after you physically stop working on it. It's cool how that works. But breaks are important, man. If you just say, all right, I'm going to take two weeks and I'm not even going to touch the drums. I'm not suggesting you start with this, by the way. But throughout your learning process, just take breaks, man. Breaks are going to be super valuable to, uh, to your learning. So anyways, those are the two bits of advice that I got for you. Like I said, I'm 100% I'm sure that they're going to help you out. Get into some harder music. It doesn't have to be jazz, fusion. It could be anything. Get into prog rock. Pick up a couple of Porcupine Tree albums or something. And just get into some really difficult stuff that is going to challenge your skill set. And I guarantee you, you're not going to hit any plateaus as long as, you, uh, as long as you stick with that stuff. All right? So there you go. Um, hopefully that will help you out, get you out of that rut you're in. And um, yeah, that's it.